Michael Keaton being right, Batman right. and 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 he's, Flash. He's gonna save it. He's gonna save the whole thing. <laughs> he's got a lot on his shoulders. I know how old Michael Keaton is. Like how many? It, let's say this thing does pop up. How many years do we actually have left where he can get in the suit? <laughs> like, I'm not. I'm not trying to be. But seriously. <laughs> Oh, Michael Keaton and Joe Biden, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, Jerry Springer just died, dude. You know, right. rest in peace, Jerry Springer. Episode one. Episode one. Only comics. I'm Mike Sizer, Adrian Bordeaux. Yep. Chris Boyle in the house. Um, well, thanks for joining us, you guys, and thanks for whoever's watching right now. Hopefully one day it'll be a bunch of people. Um, but really what we want to do right now is just tell y'all why we're doing this. And and honestly, you know, I'm interested to see your perspective, but I this kind of started as like a joke, right? Like we, right. Yeah. we work together <laughs> in different business, uh, nothing to do with comics, and you know, we have, you know, you have these sideline conversations. We start talking about comic books and, and shit like that. And then, you know, I think one of us, we just was like, dude, we should record this one day. And it just kind of started. And, and I remember, dude, thinking, I was like, I was at home, Chris. I'm like, I wonder if they're serious. Like, I'd love to do this. Yeah. So like, I wonder if they're serious. And I think you guys remember I asked you, I'm like, y'all really want to do that podcast? And then, you know, it started talking about something. And now here we are. Here we are. So, I mean, what about you? How? Starting this whole deal, what were your thoughts? It's it's cool. It's uh it's a nice uh, refreshing uh, distraction. Yes. Um, everything else that goes on that we do, you know, every day we got the daily grind. You know, yep. we're thinking about work, we're thinking about family, but we're never really thinking about these things, these passions, you know, that we have, you know, inside of us, especially those things that's been around since for well, at least for me, right, for you know, thirty or forty years. Yeah. So no, this is definitely cool. Definitely cool. What about you, Chris? Did you think I was joking when we first started talking about this? Yeah, no, I definitely yeah. did. Because like, this doesn't sound like something I would do, but I was like, you know, sure. What what the hell? I'll, That's right. Yeah. I'll give it a try. And I was like, you know what? This is not something Chris Boyle would normally do. No, it's it's not. No. Very outside of the comfort zone. But Now, why did you decide right. to do it? It just sounded fun to do. Yeah, yeah I was just like, I don't know. It's <laughs> right. just, something, just something to do. You know? yeah. right. And, like, and try. we want to be clear. We are not, like, experts on comics. So the podcast is only comics. What does that mean? The only thing we're going to talk about is comics. That's right. We're going to give you our political takes. We're not going to talk about religion. We're not going to do it. We're just going to talk about comics only. And what it means, comic books, uh, movies, video games, animated series, whatever. Anything comic book related we're going to discuss on here. But we are not experts. I can't tell you every freaking episode, I, uh, number. I can't tell you who drew what, who wrote what. I didn't read all of them. Right. I just love them. Yeah. And, and I think one of the things that you know we really bring to the table here is is – we got three very different perspectives. We're all about 15 years apart in age. Right. I'm a 80s baby. Chris, barely 99. I mean, <laughs> I mean, barely 90s. <laughs> barely 90s, yeah. 99. He says 90s, 99. but he's born 99. Yeah, Adrian. he doesn't believe me. He hasn't right. checked my right. ID. But early 70s. Early 70s. So it's like all different, very different generations. Right. And what I love is like a lot of times we don't agree on the same things here. And, and it's cool to hit, hear different takes. But um, so that's why we're doing this. We're doing this every single week. We'll drop on YouTube, um, eventually maybe some other platforms, but really the the our, we're just gonna it's like we're gonna have these conversations anyway. So should we figure let's hit record That's and right. share it with the world and, and see yeah. if you know they enjoy as well. So um, you know, we got this week there's there's a lot of stuff going on right now. Like we have the Guardians of the Galaxy three drop in May fifth. Um now are were you were you a fan of the first two movies? I was not. Um it's a it was again, it was a nice distraction. Yeah. Um it was something it was actually surprising. Yeah. Um. It, you know, decent movie, but it was like, okay, so what's this other movie that's going on over here yeah. outside of everything that I'm, you know, used to? Right. You know, the you know the Avengers, X Men, Spider Man, so on and so forth. So no, I I really didn't hear about Guardians of the Galaxy until yeah. the movie started coming out. Got it. What about you, Chris? 
I remember the commercials very well, but I <laughs> did not like the movie. <laughs> like, you didn't like it? No. <laughs> the first? I especially didn't like the second one. Wow. I thought the second one was horrible. Like, yeah, I, I no shit. genuinely couldn't stand it. To this day. Wow. To this day. Yeah. That is funny. Like, I would, uh, I'd probably rank that on my lowest. Yeah. Wow. I just didn't have, f- I just didn't think it was fun. I was like, yeah. I just, it was like a chore to sit through. <laughs> but, but, you know? Wow. Yeah. It, it was like a high quality bad movie, but I yep. just didn't. That's enjoy funny. It, you know? High quality bad movie. Yeah. I've heard did, that one before. Right? Did you know who they were before these movies? No. No, no I, I did not. And I kind of went into that. I don't even know who you are. Yeah. I, I felt the same way. Like, I know when they, because I, I didn't actually see them when they first came out. I watched them mm. after the fact. Now, I actually love them now. The first one I enjoyed day one. Mm. And for some reason, the second one, dude, that shit took me like four or five times to watch to actually get it. And I think what saved it for me was I love Drax. He's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Like he, he provides that right, that good comedy. Batista's amazing at playing Drax. Yeah, I like like the comedy like button that he has. <laughs> yes. You know, he just like, you know, I like that. Yeah, I like so that natural. character. Yeah. Mm. But I just, I also don't like movies that like uh, rely heavily on like a soundtrack. Yeah. yeah, you know, yep. Shrek being the exception. But, <laughs> Shrek's the exception. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah they, they definitely rely on that. Um, and and I like, I mean, I like Chris Pratt, Star Lord. I think he's he's sure. good there. Yep. And but I see what you're saying. Like it was so, it was just like an offshoot, right? Like right. We had because that was God. That was early on. I think we maybe had two Avengers movies at the time, and but everything was that core story, right? And then you just get these fucking guys out in space, like oh shit, what? Right, some random, you know. Entities or group of yeah. it, you know people that's coming from you know out of left field. Yeah. So yeah. But but what it did though, it it really I feel like it brought Thanos into this main story because before that we only saw him in like some end scenes, you know. Yeah, it kind of made it, it kind of made Thanos for those people that you know aren't really familiar with him. It made him more digestible. Yeah. You know, you got this, you know, this um, this team coming from outer space, so therefore you're gonna bring some enemies from outer space. It kind of right. you know nice crossover on that. Now, did you, did you know about Thanos before yes. this? Yeah. Yes. I did. And where, where did you read him? Uh, Well, <clears throat> I mean, I've been reading comic books since, you know, seventh grade. Yeah. That's when, you know, everything for me kind of came together. Got it. Um, so I, all these guys, all these super gods, yeah. you, know, you know, there's this whole hierarchy of, you know, superpowers and what everybody, and Thanos was there. So, Got yeah, it. I knew about Thanos yeah. a long time ago. What about you, Chris? No. No, no. I, I didn't know. Me like, neither. My extension for Marvel was kind of... Spider-Man, Iron Man, <laughs> and the Avengers. And then yeah. once the movie's coming out, I was like, all right, well, here's this character who I've never heard of. Yeah. But, you know, I was along for the ride. I was like, all right, you know, I, as long as I could buy it in the trailer, and they have, like, really mm. good editing in the trailers, right. I was typically sold on the movie. Got it. But And I, I didn't know who he was, but I, dude, I loved him when, I mean, though he still yeah. to this day holds up yeah. as probably right. one of the best villains they've had. Right. And Josh Brolin was great, you yeah. know. He was yeah. great. Yeah, he pulled it off. You know, I always, I see what they did with Thanos, and I'm like, do they, I wish they would have done something like that with Apocalypse back in the X Men. You know, when it had Oscar Isaac play Apocalypse. I agree. I, I was thinking. I wish they would have done something like that for the Hulk. Yeah. You know, when the Hulk first came out, that was you know pitiful rendition. Yeah. But, <laughs> oh, the yeah. first thing yeah, I could all Edward yeah. Norton. <laughs> so. Yeah, but um, and, and but I mean that the first Guardians, like I said, introduced us to Thanos. We got that backstory with Gamora and all that yeah. stuff. Um, so it. it and then I think what I really liked about the Guardians, like some of my favorite scenes with them are not even in their movies. It's in like Infinity War and Endgame when, like, when yeah. they meet Thor. Yeah. Right. Dude, that's got to be one of, one yeah. of the best all time scenes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is it's like a it's like a comic release button. Yeah. That they they just have on standby. Yeah. You know, and I, I do like that. Like the characters and I really enjoy. Well, you know, the comic relief thing, I, which is actually what killed it for me on, on the last Thor. I couldn't mm. even sit through the last oh my Thor. God. They, yeah. they just it's like they just. It was put too their much. button. Yeah. They put their, their finger on that yeah. comic relief button, right. and he just held it there. Yeah, it's like I I, I can't. I and can't it was oh, it was like a serious. Thing. You got it was old yeah. girls dying and shit. She's got right. cancer, right? And we're just everything's so funny, right? Like the more she uses the powers, the more she's gonna die, and we're just we're just having right. a ball Every, in the greatest yeah. time of our life yeah, over yeah, here. Like, she's dying. Yeah, I, I I couldn't do it. I couldn't. No. Yeah. It, it just there's just too much of that. Yes. Just, you know, going on. Yeah. And I think that's actually what's going to be pushing. Um, you know, further in, into other movies, yeah, too, which is sad, right? 
Now, with this one, so they got a couple trailers out, comes out in a couple days. I feel like it, it seems like they're going for a little bit more. I, I mean, they're still going to have the comic relief, mm -hmm. but something serious is going to happen, I feel like. I mean, they're mm -hmm. teasing. I don't know. It, I'm sure there'll be some deaths. I, I know um, Dave Batista said he's not playing Drax anymore. He said he's, like, in his 50s. Like, I can't. He's like, I can't get in this shape where I need to, like, have my <laughs> yeah. shirt off anymore, which is funny because he's, like, a WWE guy was always. Right. But dude, being in that shape at 20 and 30 ain't, like, mm -hmm. 40, 50, you know. Right. Um, and, and he wants to move on, so I could see him possibly getting sure. killed off. But I mean, the way they're teasing, it's like I feel like they're teasing Rocket's going to die. Yeah, the way the way you it get was that vibe. Yeah. yeah, I got that yeah. vibe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yo, what do you? How do you feel about Rocket as a character? Um, I I think he's amazing. I, yeah. I think he's the the glue between all of those yeah. <clears throat> because you got a couple of you know really serious you know uh, roles in there yeah. with Gamora and her sister. Oh, I love her. Um, Nebula. She's hilarious. Right. Right. <laughs> And then you got Drax, you know, the super funny. Yeah. Then you got Star Lord, who's just kind of, you know, eh. Yeah. You know, just kind of whatever is happening. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's he's like the glue, I think, uh, for for yeah. that entire team. And I think you know, it, in it's funny because like the first one, you I really felt like he was that glue, and then the second one, he was such a dick the whole time. Like he sold the battery, like he caused the <laughs> yeah, whole issue. Right, like right. Yeah, you remember? I remember during Endgame, like there was this um like. This like coup, I guess, on the line of people who were like attacking Chris Pratt because of what yes. the character did, right? Yeah, <laughs> like Star Lord hit. Yeah, you know, he screwed there up. It was like a whole internet campaign <laughs> to like get rid right. of him. Was I like, right. wh where was that same energy with Rocket? Because yeah. he screwed everything up yeah. in that movie. Right. right. <laughs> yep. And now I guess this will be the first time that we see Adam Warlock on screen in the MCU. Yeah. Yep. And he's one too. Like I've heard the name. I've seen him in some. You know, I feel like he's been in some X Men comics, maybe like um, some some of their space stories or whatnot. But I've seen him. I don't know a lot about him. Um, he he's another one of those like um, you know top level kind of guys. Um, yeah. it's kind of out there. I I didn't really see him a lot. You know, in my years of reading com comics, I mean, I wasn't really looking for him either. Yeah, yeah. You know, he falls by the wayside of like Moon Knight. You know, to, to me, yeah, yeah. you know, just one of those obscure, people you kind of like, like yeah. you know, you know about, but not really, eh, yeah, you know, yeah, not re doesn't really do it for you, kind right. of, deal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I know about him. I, I, again, way back when. Yeah. Now he was. You read the Infinity Gauntlet, right? I did not. No. Okay. I I did a few years ago, and I I read it because of the movie. And it was, it's not as good as the movie. No. No. You know, everyone, everyone's like, the yeah. book's better. No. Well, a lot of times with comics, that's not true. A lot of times yeah. it's not, yeah. It's like, that is one thing I will say Marvel's been been really great at is taking, like, mediocre stories from the comics and mm -hmm. turning them into great stories on screen. Okay, yep. You yep. know, it's I like agree. they borrow enough and they change enough, and then you get, like, you know, some of these purists, like, that's not how it happened in the comic. Like, well, no shit. If you want, then read the comics. Right. Yeah. This is the movie, dude. It's different. Mm -hmm. If it right. was the exact same thing, there'd be no you 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 wouldn't care. You'd bored after a while, right? You know, um, because you'd already know the story. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I love how they bought like because you you've a lot of times they fake you like you think you know where they're going yeah. and then you're like oh shit. Now they sometimes they screw it up. Like have, you also haven't seen the new Ant Man. I have not no no like with Modok. I'm sure you've probably seen some of these like. <laughs> It's just like a big I, ass head, <laughs> like. Yeah, I, not, I won't be seeing in a, that in a, yeah. in a rocket chair. Yeah, 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 no. yeah, yeah. I mean, and then I they do not. that at times. Yeah, but there's been a lot of things where I think they change for the better. Well, some things is just like I have to put myself. First of all, I'm not gonna go to the movies and see like you know the new Ant Man kind of a thing. Yeah. But then this kind of just by looking at it, I'm like, well, it's got to be a rainy Saturday. Yeah. I have zero to do. Let me just sit down and just you know, um, cons you know, look at this thing just just because just yeah, yeah. because it's a conversation piece. Yeah. But outside of that, I wouldn't watch it. Dude, I went with my kids. I went twice, and I think I fell asleep both times. Really? Yeah. Wow. You yeah. went twice? I went. Yeah. Unfortunately, Chris, I went twice because <laughs> I'm like I, the first time I go, I got to go by myself because I have four kids. They're young, and you know the movies like it, it was, they got to get up, go to the bathroom at times. So I'm like, you know, I'm gonna go myself first, so I don't have any distractions. And then I was then I fell asleep that time. So I was like, I don't know if I didn't like it or it was just because I fell asleep. So I'm like, we'll, we'll give this, we'll give one more shot, you know. And then we went like a couple of days later with them. It's like, oh yeah, no, this, uh, -uh. Nope. no, it's the weakest no. of the Ant Man movies, and that is, um, I mean, that's impressive because the Ant Man movies, yeah, are, they're like a little side, kind of like the guy, it's like right. a little right. side dish, right? Like, I mean, the first one was 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 entertaining, yeah, but it just got, I mean, first of all, he's like a kind of a no character, yeah, anyway, yeah, um. It, 
but you know the first movie was entertaining. He's he he was entertaining. You know, in the other things that he he showed up in. Yeah, but absolutely. The movie by itself, uh, no, it, it was kind of like the only reason I didn't feel that way about you, the way you feel about that man, yeah. about uh, uh, the second Black Panther, was because I was so pissed. Yeah, in the movie that I actually didn't fall asleep, <laughs> which is what I did during the Thor movie. Yeah. So. Yeah, you wish you could have fell asleep. I wish I could have fell asleep. <laughs> yeah, I, I also wish I could have fallen asleep during <laughs> Thor. Thor was like really bad. It was yeah. like not fun. Yeah. And you know what? What what annoyed me too is they like they wasted what's his name Christian Bale like because he was great as Gore the Butcher. Yeah, but he was on screen for what like six minutes. Right. And they had some really cool looking visuals, like mm -hmm. the whole w at the end when it was all black and white on that planet where Gore right. was, and I think just Thor was like it can cut like that stuff. It looked real cool, mm -hmm. but just the the yeah the out the humor and, and I think it also I don't know what's go like in the past Marvel movies seem to be a little bit longer, mm -hmm. and now I don't know if it's the studio going make make them shorter, but then they feel rushed. Like even the Black Panther, I feel like it was. They spent so much time, and yeah. I know they have to, you know, the whole, you mm -hmm. know, T'Challa and, and, you know, Chadwick Boseman. So they, they honored him. I think they did a great job. To me, that was the best part of the movie. Yeah. I mean, the, just the opening credit when they were oh, yeah. honoring the Chadwick black, yeah. Boseman. That, after that, the movie went downhill for me. Yeah. And then I, I just, I feel like that took up so much time of the movie, which I was good with, but mm -hmm. then they just rushed the, the third act. Like it it like ended in, so fast. In like right. five so minutes, fast. she goes right. from just being some chick to being Black Panther, like, right. in like five minutes. And they still committed like war crimes throughout the entire <laughs> thing, and she just like forgives that. Right. And she's like, yeah, we right. can be friends now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we got your back now. <laughs> well, the, yeah. reason, the reason that the movie was short because they knew it sucked. I, that's their way. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, okay, we ju we're just going to put something out because we have to. Right. Yeah. But let's just cut it short because, eh, it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> now, and then The Guardian, so uh, it looks like Adam Warlock's starting off as a villain, right? He's with the, um, I forget the name of that squad, but it was the, the the people that are all in gold from the second movie, yeah, the ones I, that I forget them too. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I can see them in my mind. But yeah. yeah, I mean they look cool on screen, sure. but the ones that Rocket stole the batteries exactly. from. So we're still dealing with that shit. Right. Like, damn it, Rocket! Right, like some of uh, really. Yep. <laughs> so that's gonna come back at home. But yeah, it looks like he's kind of a villain to start off, which it kind of switches in the comics at times, right? Again, not a lot of history with yeah. him. Um, I, I know who the character is. Yeah. Um, but outside of that, I didn't really follow him. Yeah. I, I feel I feel like I've seen him more on the good side, but um, I mean, it looks powerful as hell, so it right. should be should be um, pretty right. good. And it's like they do a great job of teasing. Like there's so many of those clips, like where Star yeah. Lord's screaming, like, mm. but they ain't gonna show you who's on the other side, you know. But I like because I, yeah. I feel like there's been times with these movies where they spoil everything that's good in, in the trailer. In the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I was gonna say it just seems like sometimes that why even go see the movie because you've seen the yeah. movie in the trailers, yeah. you know, between trailers one, two, and three. You right. Know, they show a little bit of, you know, yeah. the movie in each time, but it's like I, I've already seen the movie. Yep. Like I don't even want to go and see well, I don't we, this is about comics, so I don't want to talk <laughs> about other movies, but Fast and Furious ten, I don't even want to go see it now because I've seen so much Everything. of it. Yeah. Oh, they're worse. Yeah, they're they're even worse at it. But I feel I, I also I think with um some of the movies we were talking about, like Ant Man, they showed all that shit in there. Right. Like I knew going into it that he was gonna be in the quantum realm and that, you know, what Kang was gonna be like we knew right. all that going into right. it. And they showed all yeah. like the, and it's almost like, I, I hate when there's parts of the trailer you see that seem like a very important part. Then you're in the movie about halfway through, yeah. and they're trying to tease like that the guy's in some type of danger. But you go, no, nah, I remember in the trailer there's he's, some shit. He's right. okay, yeah. yeah. Right. But you you talked about this a while ago, how they market every movie now as like the next end game. Yeah. <laughs> like this is gonna change everything in right. cinema, and it's just not. Right. It's right. it's Ant Man three. Exactly. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, let's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. let's, let's, let's keep our expectations, <laughs> like, here, okay? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a great point, right? And they, they overhyped the shit out. And, and I, I think that's also, it's kind of a trend with all these. Like, I think they started with the Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. Now, No Way Home was great. Right. I love No Way Home. Right. And then, you know, it, what was it? Multiverse of Madness. I, first time I hated it. Mm -hmm. I rewatched it again a couple times at Disney+. Plus. I'm like, you know what? It's actually a pretty decent movie. I still think they... They introduce too much at one time. It's, it's mm. madness. It's, def <laughs> yeah. it's definitely madness. Yeah, yeah, I'll it's, give it that. It's titled properly. <laughs> yeah, but you also have to look at it from from my perspective. I mean, I've been um, <clears throat> dealing with comics for, you know, 30, 40 years, yeah. and I know a lot of the backstory. Like, for me, it's, it's, ex it's excruciating to see a reboot every time they have a new actor. <laughs> There's so much content out there for each one of these, you know, major player yeah. um, characters, but every time they introduce somebody, 
<clears throat> they re, re you know redo the story again. Yep. I'm tired of seeing how Flash became Flash. I'm yep. tired of seeing how Superman became Superman. Right. I'm tired of uh, all of this stuff. Are you tired of seeing Batman's parents? Dude, died? I am so uh, tired. Dude, uh, yes. We've <laughs> talked about now. Y'all know I love Batman, right? Sure, but right, dude. I never if if in my I'm only 37. Within my lifetime, if I never see. Thomas and Martha Wayne killed exactly. again. I'm good. We got it. I will it. be okay. Right. Yeah. How many comic book panels have we seen them die in? Right. A lot. How many a um, lot. animated shows yeah. and movies, a right? Lot. Yep. How many actual movies? That's. I love the fact that the newer one did not have them in them. At, yeah. Like, I mean, the, the death wasn't in there. They referenced it, but do we don't need to see it. It's I've like, seen them dead right. more than I've seen them alive. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. You know, it's like sometimes, you know, in some movies, like uh, Thomas is portrayed as like a kind of crooked politician or whatnot, like the Joker and stuff. I'm like, I wonder if that's more true and everyone's trying to get revenge on him. Like, we're just going to kill this <laughs> son of a bitch every chance we got, right, dude. Like, that right, Thomas Wade, right. we're going to get his ass again. Right. So, I, I yeah, I'm just, I'm done with all that yeah. stuff, dude. Yeah. Just move on. This, I mean, com these comics have been around, um, actually, DC has been around longer than Marvel. That's right. Yeah. On a stretch. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they, they have so many stories to tell. Stop wasting time, you know rehashing stuff that everybody knows about right yeah. you know and if you do it if, if you if you want to do it do it in like a little quick dream or something i you know stop yeah. making the whole movie about how spider-man got bit by some spider right yeah Move well, on. well i loved with the um the home on uh, you know spider-man homecoming the old tom holland series we didn't have to go through that again right like the minute we i then i thought that was a great introduction too in civil war yeah like, i thought it was a good introduction i just didn't like that portrayals spider-man in that universe because he just yeah. gets handed everything True. It's like a spoiled, like, trust fund kid. It is kind of weird. It's, like, yeah. opposite, right? Like, he started with everything because of, you know, Iron Man or whatnot, and now he's back to nothing. Yeah, now he's, like, how he's supposed to be. Yeah. Like, he's supposed to be poor. He's supposed right. to be living out of a, right. out of a right. little crappy apartment and all that. So, I, you know, I, I'm excited for that. Now I feel like they've finally, like, molded the perfect Spider-Man. Yeah. Through, like, tragedy. The, the, right. The, the, the only thing I don't like about the current Spider-Man that they seem to be missing is that how smart he is. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, 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 the way he manipulates the suit and everything seems to, be, seems to be, the way they portray it, is a result of access to Tony Stark's uh, right. technology. Yes. But yep. he's actually a brilliant kid to begin with, which is why he was able to create the web shooters and the suit and all this other kind of stuff. So, yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's the only... only component that i think is missing out of this new spider-man yeah yeah and and you know we saw that in in both of the other you know iterations we right. saw with, with toby mcguire andrew garfield right now who, who would you say is the best spider-man out of three i i, I like the toby mcguire because it was that was the the, the freshest reboot but yeah. i say like the this this uh, this latest kid yeah um yeah, toby me. mcguire is kind of like you know when they betrayed him he was older pudgy short you yeah. know you know peter park is a kind of a he's not like um extremely tall kid but right. he's a lanky kind of skinny nerdy kid uh toby mcguire just didn't go, do it yeah. Tom Holland, um, he kind of fits the bill. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So I, 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 I like him. He does. I think he looks more like like Peter Parker. Yeah. Or, yeah. What he would look like. What about you, Chris? Best one. Oh, the best best one is 2002 Spider Man. We told him why. Like <laughs> yeah, undisputedly, yeah, like it, it's he's he is the best one. Like that is, I've re. That's probably my most watched movie. It's probably really? my favorite really? movie. The Ooh. first one and then the second one is is also like impeccable. Yeah, we don't like to we don't need to talk about the third one right now. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll, we'll get into that a different time. Who was that? Uh, the tall, lanky uh, Andrew Garfield the, for the second. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the the amazing the, Spider, the, the one shot wonder, the yeah. one hit wonder. He was like in and out. Yep. Yeah, he, he only got two movies. He didn't get that third one, man. Uh, I I didn't, I, I, didn't, I didn't know he had a second one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I didn't I, mind him, dude. I I thought he was good. Yeah, I I thought I thought he was. I thought he was good. I thought Spider Man or Amazing Spider Man One was great. Yeah. I thought for a reboot, you know, which I un it was a it's exhausting. It was so soon too. It was. It was like still within the same decade that they yeah. like rebooted it or whatever. And then the the second one that they did with Jamie Fox, yep. he yep. played the villain. That was awful. That yes. Was awful. Yes. 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 That was like really bad. I'm but glad he got his redemption in in No Way Home. I did. I just all the. It was, no way home. It just exists in this like goofy little one-off thing for yeah. me because it was like, you know, it, it was, it was weird to see all these people come back, right. you know, after they have been deceased for so long. Especially like Jamie Foxx, they had to like fix that character, yes, because he was done so poorly in that second movie. Mm -hmm. So when they brought him back in the other one, it was just like totally different. Yeah, and and I'm not I'm not one of those like it has to look just like the comics, but. Mm -hmm. 
I also don't like when they change it just to change it. Like it, they they could he looked nothing like Electro in the comics. No. And and that was the one where at the end they teased that scene with Rhino. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And it was just some fat dude in yeah. like a mechanical it was just a, suit. It was just a big Russian guy. <laughs> yes. Just throwing cars for no reason. Yeah. Like it, there was actually like no reason for him to be committing those crimes. Right. <laughs> and then, I, I don't know. It makes you wonder if they get bribed to pick certain characters because certain certain people just it just yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Fit. Yeah. It's just a bad fit. I don't I don't I don't know what they're thinking about, but. Not a good thing. No, not at all. But uh, but no, I, I think we I love love Noah Helm. But I do think that's been the peak of this current phase or whatnot. You know. But I agree with you, Chris. I feel like every movie since then, they hype like the next End Game. And I wonder, like, if if they didn't do that, would some people's takes be a little bit different, right? Like, because if I'm going and expecting it's going to be this level, mm. I'm expecting that because you told me. Yeah. Right. Then I get there, I'm like, no, dude, it actually wasn't a bad movie, but it's more like here. You know what I'm I'm expecting? I'm expecting a good story. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, in game level all the time. It doesn't have to be, you know, it, it, it doesn't have to be the top of the movie um, to be a good story. Just make a good story. Right. That's it for me. Yeah. And you can just, you can string me along for decades, which is what the comic book, you know, uh, genre is all right. about. That's what they did the first time. Right. It took us 10 years to get to Endgame. Now they're trying to make a new Endgame every two months. Not going to work. Not going to work. Not and it's work. like you can only. I feel like we, it's it's like overload. Like I, I think that was the thing with, with Doctor Strange. It wasn't bad because I, I love Wanda's whole story. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite comic stories is the whole Avengers Dissembled up through House of M. Right. And I feel like with that, like if you watch WandaVision, Doctor Strange is a better movie in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But because it was just so much so fast, it was mm -hmm. it was just too much. They try to make it too big. I right. think. I mean, right. some of the visuals in that movie are amazing. Parts of the story. Absolutely. But then so always it, like trying to top themselves, which is the issue. Yeah. Like they always need like the next big thing above that. And right. they've already kind of like hit the ceiling. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's like trying to put something above that it feels exhausting as like a viewer. And I feel like like fans would be there for some more grounded stories. Like we we sh like I look like that what they did with Spider Man, how now he's grounded. I'm sure he'll build his way back up, but now yeah. we're there for the for the yeah. climb. Yeah. Right. Instead of just everyone's just, you know, firing on on a hundred cylinders and and I mean, they introduced so much shit. They got the right. dark hole, the, all these things we've never even heard of or just been glossed over. Now there's all but these Don't new forget, rules. they destroyed the dark hole in every universe somehow. Yeah. <laughs> like, they, just, they didn't explain how like nope. that could even happen. Like, what do you mean? That's a power? You could just do that now? Yeah. Right. That's like one one director, one they write in, it's like, this is going to be someone else's problem, I guess. Hey, yeah, we'll destroy no, yeah. all this shit. No, <laughs> hey, good luck, Chris, on your movie. Look what we just did. <laughs> um. So, all right, on this... Guardian. So our, let's just go around. Do you think it's gonna be a good movie or not? Um, I think it'll be entertaining. Yeah. Um, I hopefully it's the last one. Yeah. Um, so they can move on to other things. Right. Um, which it appears that they're gonna do. Yeah. Um, so um, hopefully it's entertaining, more entertaining than what I understand the latest Ant, Ant Man is. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, because I actually like them, even though I didn't follow follow them you know, when I was growing up in comics. Yeah, no, they did a good job. And I think, like, I've, I've gone back a little bit and checked them out, and they're very different, you know, than a lot of, like, their original, you know, mm -hmm. characters. So I, th I think they did a great job on screen. Now, if, if you had to pick, are, you think anyone's going to die? Um, I didn't get the, get the um, feel that Rocket was going to die. Okay. Um, they kind of made it look like Drax was going to die. You know, him yeah. getting injured and all, you know, because they, sh you know, showed him a lot. Right. And and typically when they do that, they're gonna probably wipe that character out. Yeah. Um, but that's the feeling that I got. Got it. But it, it, they they might all limp home and then part their part ways. That's right. that's kind of how I'm feeling about it. All right. So you're predicting he dies or he doesn't? He does not. He does not. All right. We'll we'll, we'll check this next week. What about you, Chris? Do I think it's gonna be a good movie? You think it's gonna be a good movie at first? If it's self-contained enough, yeah. If they stop with all like trying to connect it to everything yeah. else, just make a good, fun, not like a comedy thing, but just like a nice send off for the characters. I got yeah. the feeling that they want to do like like this is like right. your end of the trilogy kind of right, thing. Right. So do that. So if you keep it self-contained or whatever, you know, I, I think it'll be good. Will I like it? I don't know because I didn't <laughs> like the second one. Everyone said that was amazing. Yeah, you know. Um, do I think anyone's gonna die? I th I do think Rocket probably will. Okay. Just because that's that was the vibe that I kind of got from the trailer. Someone's got to. Yeah, I think so. You know, yeah. so they gotta they gotta end it somehow. It seems like they're putting the characters back on the shelf. So you're so. saying Rocket dies? 
Yeah, yeah, I think I'll go with that one. Rocket dies. You're saying no one dies. I'm going to say I think it will be good. I do. I think it I think it will be up there with, you know, now I guess it all depends if you like the first two. I did, so I think it'd be right up there with that. I don't think it's going to live up to – I've seen some reviews where it's like, yeah, it's the best thing since Endgame or best thing since um, No Way Home. But I'm like, that's also – that's not saying much, right? It's like like Jay-Z said, I'm the tallest midget. Like, it's, you, <laughs> right. it's, you're, you're just as good as – is you're better than these shitty movies that were released. Okay, so I do think they'll hit that. Do I – I think I, – I, I think there may even be multiple deaths. I do think Drax is dying. I'm going to say that, and I think there's a – I'm 50-50 on Rocket. So, yeah. I, like, I, I hear I, – I agree with you. I think they're showing him a lot. Right. And then yeah. also the fact that Batista said that, that he's done playing a character. But a lot of times that's like uh, – what's that called? Red herring? Like, they're just kind of, right. you right. know, head yeah. fake you. So, right. but I'm I'm going to go good movie, um, Drax dies, and Rocket I'm 50-50 on. But I do think it's going to be like a send-off for a lot of them. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, it, it needs to be. Um, yeah. And maybe <clears throat> there'll be a reboot on Guardians of the Galaxy in the future. But because, it, you know, um, Batista, you know, like you said, you know, he's getting older. A lot of people, they just come, they just kind of want to bow out. Yeah. Um, kind of like uh, T'Challa's mother in The Black Panther. Yeah. You know, that character, she's like, I'm done, you know, in right. real life. So they killed her off in the movie. You know, things like that. So yeah. people are aging out. That's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing is I feel like a lot of the Marvel audience just is like tired. aging out. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So it's like keeping this one story. Like if you look at it like a group of characters, this is their story. Keeping it going for like 10, 15 years. That's a lot to it ask is. people it to is. like it sit is. there and, and do with you. You know what I mean? Right. I, know, I, was, I had this thought recently. Like, will they get to the point where they just reboot the whole thing because it's been too long? You know, like, cause like your point, the, 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 the audience, I mean, my son was – Shit, he was like th- four when they started doing this stuff. Right yeah. now he's eighteen. He don't go yeah. to them with us anymore. Yeah, well, little kids go. You know, like wow. right. So different, a lot different generation. Yeah, which is also why they're trying to pilot different types of characters and switching up characters, which I, I think is a mistake. Yeah, you know, bring out the there's so many different characters in the comic book you know universe um, that they can you know uh, elevate as opposed to trying to change you know you know, the, the, the top tier characters yeah. all the time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And now James Gunn, he's got, so he's got guardians three coming out. Yep. He was named, I forget his exact title, but he's basically, they're trying to make him the, the Kevin Feige of, of DC. Mm-hmm. Um, we have the flash coming out June 16th. And then we have, um, blue beetle. I don't even know who you are. I also have no idea who blue beetle is. Um, I saw the trailer. I will say that looks good. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Flash, it's like it's more. I'm Batman. Th- yeah. I feel like that's all the hype. As it should be. As, <laughs> as it should as, be. As it should be. But yeah, <laughs> it's being up until that the most recent trailer. It's marketed as a Batman movie. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, the mo- the recent one actually feels like a Flash movie. Yeah, and I just feel like I don't know if it's because they've decided he's too uninteresting to like have be the title character or whatever. Because yeah. they're putting a lot on this. They are. And then they were like. People aren't going to come to see it if it's like a Flash movie, so they're banking on Batman because right. you're going to go see it. I wonder how much is it that, or how much is it like the controversy behind the actor? With a all lot of it legal is the, trouble. A lot of it, they're it. trying to put him in the dark. Yeah, a lot of it is Ezra Miller. Um, yeah. I, I this is one of those uh, things where they they miscast. Yeah, the Flash. He is not the Flash to me. Yeah. Um, in any aspect. Got you know? it. I mean, how do you, how are you switching at a million miles an hour? I mean, I just, yeah. just I it just, it's weird. It's yeah. just I can't even look at the commercials. The I feel way, I feel like what they him. were trying to do was like make him a Peter Parker. They want him to be this dorky kid who's funny the whole time, and mm-hmm. and I don't. Now I'm not the biggest Flash fan, but I agree. I, it's nothing like some other iteration. I, I I enjoy it. I think that the issue is just more his legal stuff, and yeah. and I think they kind of like you know. I don't know. They went. They went all in when they shouldn't have. Or I thought. I I genuinely thought they were gonna cancel the movie. Yeah. Like, cause it, I thought it was getting so bad, and it was a new thing every single yes. like day yeah. with this dude. Yeah. For like two months, he mm-hmm. was on like a crime spree in Hawaii. Yep. And I was like, they're gonna cancel the movie. They're gonna cancel the movie. <laughs> and then I realized like they must have so much money tied up in that. Yeah. Not just right now, but they're probably banking on this to fix whatever it is they have going Absolutely. on. 
So they're just going to push it out even though, like, he's not the guy. Right. I think the answer, they delayed it. They got him to apologize, you know, the, clean up the act or whatever, and, and here we are. So, But I, I do. Th- I think they just had way too much riding on it where they couldn't. Well, but, they, but they, they're but talking about um, on the other side, Marvel, King, yeah. um, he got into some trouble. Um, allegedly yeah. um, assault and battery or something that went right, on right. some court date. For him, but they're already talking about just dropping him altogether. You know, so it's I. Yeah. I, again, you know, under the table, you know, yeah. palm in the palm of the hand, the fit hands or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it just they do whatever they want to do, and the public, you know, we um, have to deal with it. Right. And you know, we're we're the victims in all of this because you know we're sitting around in anticipation, but then they come out of left field with all this stuff. And it's like, okay, so is it going to get delayed? Is the character going to change? Right. You know, I feel like, like this whole movie's been delayed, though, right? I, I feel like I feel like it originally was going to come out earlier. Uh, yeah, I think they kept yeah pushing it back they can, because of the they can delay issues. it some more. Yeah, <laughs> maybe well, they should. Hey, <laughs> they should just a, yeah. as of now, it's coming out June sixteenth, so we'll yeah. see. Um, and, and you know, I think like I feel like they're making the same mistake again. So. You know, the the before this, they had the DCEU, I think it was called. Yeah. Right? That was the, you know, Man of Steel was the first one. Yeah. And then they, you know, Batman versus Superman, which to talk, you know, talk about his origin, the beating a dead horse. I liked how in that movie it was in the opening credits. Yeah. And it was, yeah. I actually liked that one because it was like kind of like really cinematic the way that they yeah. shot it and everything. It, mm. you know, it was very uh, dramatic and all that. I, I enjoyed that iteration. But the movie as a whole. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, then the movie started. <laughs> yeah, like it should have just been a Batman movie. Like yeah. just introduce this character, but it was like, no, he's, he wants to kill Superman now, and here's right. Wonder Woman, and, and here's Flash too for some reason, and don't forget Aquaman is also in this universe. <laughs> like, right. What is right. going on? Right. 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 Yeah, and it lot. just happens like this. Like, And I think with their, my issue with that, you know, at that point, I forget what year it came out. It may have been like early 10, 2016. Maybe. 16. 2016. So 16, it came out. We already had the first Avengers movie. Because yep. that was, what, 10 maybe? 10, 11? Yeah. Um, or not, maybe it was 12. But anyways, we had that. I think um, that was around the time Age of Ultron came out. But they built, there was like five, six, seven movies to even get to Avengers. And then the DC, we had one Superman movie. And all of a sudden, we got the Justice League. Yeah, one Superman right. movie, and everyone seems to be at the same party for some reason. Yeah. In the same state, in the same city. And it's like, right. oh, my God, wow, we're all friends now. Yep. Like, right. What? What do you mean? Right. Yep, they just rushed it, but it didn't work. No. Because then then the Justice League, and obviously everyone knows what happened there, was Snyder versus the – now, have you all right. seen both cuts? I've never seen the original. I've only seen the Snyder cut. I've seen the Snyder cut. Um, it was – Dark. It was darker. And yeah. If you can make a DC movie more, you know, more <laughs> I dark. know. Um, it was darker. Um, it 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 actually kind of you know uh, showed a little bit more of Superman's power. Yeah. That, that kind of thing. So I, I I've seen both. Um, they they were both okay. Yeah. Just a little different spin. That's all. Got it. You seen both, Chris? I haven't actually seen Justice League either of them. Either of them. Um. Uh, probably, it might be a good thing. Yeah, I keep having this debate with my friend that because he wants me to watch both because we we both think that like uh, the Snyder cut was probably I mean he had a chance to see what went wrong with the yeah. other guy so it's definitely not <laughs> what it was originally right. supposed to be. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> but I also don't have the determination to set aside four hours to watch the movie. Like yeah. I would have to do it in like one hour bursts. Well, you you can. There are it is chapters, and I, I, if I remember right, it is about an hour a piece. I think where they they kind of stops in the movie. Yeah. Um. But I I agree. I, that's one of the things I said when it first dropped. I'm like, there's no way that this four hour cut with all these cool looking slow mo scenes and all these extra shots was his original plan. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, and I, I'm not knocking it for it, but then, but don't say it is. Then just yeah. be honest. Right. Say I saw this shitty ass movie that what's his name made, right. and then I had to come in and make it better. Right. You know? yeah. Because right. no one was signed up for a four hour movie in the in the, in the uh, theater. No. No, that's the thing. Why would no. you plan? So everyone, everyone's like, uh, well. They messed with his vision. They cut the movie down or whatever. Well, what? Why did he plan on it being four hours? <laughs> right. <laughs> why? Why did you immediately assume that contract with your audience? Like, all right, you guys are going to be here to watch a four-hour movie. Yeah. Like that's a big. You, had, you didn't build to this. I know. Like, what was it? I think. Um, I mean, Endgame was three hours. Yeah. You know, and that yeah. was pushing it at the time. Right. It was like, okay, you know, this is going to be three hours, but we're going to keep you entertained the whole time. Yeah. 
and Justice League, from my understanding, just was not. I've seen clips of yeah. the original one, and it's just, yeah. yeah from what I've seen, I think I've seen enough. I've seen, yeah, I've seen <laughs> bits and pieces of the original, but I'm like, I, I turned it on one night to watch the, mm-hmm. and I'm like, why am I even doing this? I don't care about this movie. It sucks. I don't know. It's it's, it's hard to get really committed to any of DC's recent movies. They just just do a bad job of it. I don't yeah. understand. I mean, just, okay, if you're going to copy a movie, look at how Marvel does movies and just do that. Right. You know, we accept with your characters. Exactly. You know, don't shoot them in the dark. Don't DC shoot them in the dark. DC has great stories. Right. Great stories. But Absolutely. But we've barely seen any of them on screen. Absolutely. I mean, I... Like Aqu- the Aquaman character, that's one of the only characters with the Jason Momo cast that I think they did a decent job with. Yeah. Right. But he has a backstory, and actually, Aquaman, at least from my perspective, is the underwater version of Superman, which they actually kind of did him justice in this. Other than that, it was just some you know dude swimming around you know with with his feet actually <laughs> yeah. you know um, talking to fish. Right. You know. But this character, Jason Momo character, was a the Superman version of you know, but it's, it's just underwater. So they did yeah. a good job that. So to me, Aquaman was the best DC movie that's come out in ever, forever. Yeah, actually. Wow, I, I actually I've never seen those. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it, they're, they're they're pretty cool. Yeah. Definitely better than the Superman, the Justice League. All of that stuff. Even that Man of Steel. I don't think I've seen the whole thing straight through. It's just. Oh, you haven't long. seen the whole thing? No. It's not bad. It's uh well. I always I said at the time it was like a, it was boring. a C movie. I do think it's kind of boring. Yeah. yeah, that's the problem. I think, I think Superman can be very boring. As, yeah, as when a when given to someone, you know, who who can't write it really correctly, it's the same story. It's like big monster. Superman must fight yeah. big monster. Well, but they also always restart his you know his his background. True. Yeah, he's yeah. another one. You know, yeah. they they take two and a half movies. Yeah. Oh, he's from Krypton, Krypton and blah blah blah. You know, the dog is going to show up eventually. Yeah. The cousin is going to show <laughs> yeah, up eventually. Yeah. Yep. You know, now uh, they're talking about... Um, There's the girl know, now. That's his cousin, right? Yeah. Like, Kara. they just randomly... Sw- because they they got rid of the actor, I guess, so they just said, shit, well, instead of having Henry Cavell here, we're just going to have some chick be his... Exactly. <laughs> However, they're thinking about uh, recasting Her- Henry Cavell as maybe his father now. Okay. Or uh, Zod. Or, they, you know, they, they, they're they trying to still keep him in yeah. the fold. Uh, but not. He looks the Superman. part. I right. think he was ca- like that. Is one thing I'll say about the first attempt that DC had at this cinematic universe. I think a lot of their casting was on point. Looked right. Like yeah. I loved Ben Affleck as the older Batman. Yeah. Like it gave me Dark Knight Returns vibes. Right. You know, he was bulkier, mm-hmm. and you know they had that, and he looks like Bruce Wayne. Visually, right. it's right. perfect. Yeah. I won't mm-hmm. forgive DC for messing that up. Yeah. Because I thought visually you had He's shooting that's, people that's him. and driving a tank. Why is he throwing <laughs> grenades at people? <laughs> what? He tied a man to a radiator and branded him. Yeah. It's like, what is going on? You know, like, I, I take back what I said earlier. I will watch Martha Wayne and, and Thomas <laughs> Wayne die five more times if we never have to see Batman shoot people <laughs> or use a fucking grenade or brand someone. Right. Can he just beat the shit out of people like he does? He was actually like a war criminal in that movie. Like he wasn't a good guy. And it was like it was that's what I'm saying. Like they messed it up because visually it was perfect. Like that was Batman. I've yet to meet somebody that likes the whole um Martha. Yeah, I don't know what they were going for with that. <laughs> like, so if anyone's and you you love that, please let us know because right, I right. I've never like that was one of the dumbest moments I've ever seen in the comic book movie. And I mean, w- there's a for every good movie, there's three bad ones. So we've seen right. some dumb shit. Right. But they're like he they're trying to kill each other, and he just out of nowhere calls his mom's name. Right. You know, super Martha. And then Bruce is like, or Batman's like, oh shit, I have a Martha too. Right. You have a mom. I have a mom. <laughs> Let's stop fighting. We both have moms, and they have right. the same name. I'll go save her. You stay here. Right. I'll go save your mom and shoot a bunch of people. Like, what? <laughs> the movie starts with, like, Batman deciding to kill a man. <laughs> like, he decides immediately, like, We're already off the rails. has to die. And it's like, whoa. Like, yeah. who is this guy? Yeah. Like, Which is completely out of character. That's uh, the problem. Because that's one of, that's Batman's and Superman's crutch. Yeah. They will not kill people. Right. And I, I think people are also kind of exhausted with that too. Yeah, and yeah. Because I mean, certain people like the Joker. Eh, he he should probably go in at least yeah. some some universe. Right, you know, right. You know. Well, that's like I think the closest he came to was it Hush when he was like literally about to kill him. 
Yeah, that was that was, it was uh, pounding, was which one, yeah. I love. And we'll do a whole episode on that that comic run. There was an animation where um, the Joker did not. Um, he could, he didn't. He wanted to piss Batman off so bad. Um, actually, he didn't go after Batman. He went after Superman. Yeah, he blew up Metropolis with a a bomb. Okay, and then made Superman kill Lois, who was pregnant with his baby at oh, the time. Oh God! So Superman killed him. Yeah. You know, you know, punched his heart out kind of a deal. So that became a whole thing. So that was cool. Yeah. That was cool. But you don't see a lot of that. That was Injustice or something like that, right? Yeah. That was, I don't remember. I think that was the premise of that one. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I just don't, like you said, like, it, that. it's like the found. I'm all for, like, doing a character a bit differently. Like, right. show me a different Spider-Man. I'm cool with that, you sure. know. Change the origin story. I'm good with that, too. But, like... Like, that's such an integral part of the character. Yeah. That's like, okay, you need to give me a reason to buy into this. Right. Not just, I decided to kill this man. And like, not right off the bat like that. No. Like, like we should build, if that's if, if you're going to make Batman finally break and kill, mm -hmm. we should build to that. Sure. Like, in this new, the whole, I think it would fit the whole Robert Pattinson one. It's dark. Sure. It's moody. Like, sure. it seems like, a, it's inevitable they're going to introduce a Joker again, right? Yeah. Like, if it ended with Batman finally breaking and killing Joker, and that was the end of that trilogy, that I'd, I'd be fine with that. That Yeah, that would that would be kind of crazy. I would like that. Because in yeah. the killing joke, do you believe that he kills Joker? Yeah, yeah. I yeah, do. That, yeah. Yeah. I didn't for a while. Did yeah. you get that off the first time? No. No. But dead, if you pay it, it's, the dialogue stops. Or it's the, they're laughing on both sides, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, Joker stops laughing. And it like cuts to black or whatever, and I've not I've not read it in like a year, so I'm not mm -hmm. I can't tell you again. We're not experts, but I right. just know it's about what happened, mm -hmm. you know. And, and so at first few times, like I I, I never got that from it, mm -hmm. but then one day I'm like looking like oh shit, he fucking kills him in this like first time. Yep. But again, it it was an offshoot. It took a lot. I yeah. mean, what he did with Barbara Gordon, Jim Gordon, like it, it took so much to push him to that edge. And like you said, this one, he's just, you know what? I think I'm gonna kill this guy. <laughs> yeah, it, it's justifiable. Yeah, justifiable homicide. Basically. Yeah, I think you right. can kill people. I just think you have to like show me why. Like your iteration of the character, you have to explain to me why you were breaking this rule. Yeah. Why this has driven this character so far to do that? Because you already have like a like a really set in stone moral code for him, which I agree is exhausting a lot of the time. It is, yeah. So if you change that about the character, you need to take the time to explain to me why. Yep. But that was the DC's issue. They they just had to rush everything. Yeah. Like, why did we have a Justice League? It just happened overnight. Right. right. And I feel like they're making the same mistake with this movie because obviously they're into the multiverse already. It took Marvel, what, almost 20 years to get to the multiverse? Yeah. And DC, it's like... I think that's my, this movie looks good, this Flash movie, but I'm also like, why are we having this Flash movie right now? Why is all, like, the last time we saw Flash was the Justice League movie. Right. All of a sudden, he's going back in time. We got Michael Keaton Batman there. We got Ben Affleck again. There's, like, three different Flash characters. Like, it just, there's some female Superman that we've never been introduced before, mm. and it's just like this. I don't know. I, I think they're riding on the coattails, or even even um, the, the latest Spider-Man they're riding on the coattails of the animated movie, uh, Spider-Man, yeah. into, into the multiverse. That was so popular. I, yeah, I love that movie. So everybody starts splitting into these multiverses. Un unfortunately for DC, um, they didn't have a history of all right. these other characters <laughs> first. They just brought everybody together. It's like all of a sudden, you know, they had, it's like the movie It. All of a sudden, all these, all the family members start coming back to the same little town that yeah. everybody forgot about. And then now you got to explain everybody. Right. So I, I think it was, it was riding on the coattails of, uh, you know, Spider-Man into the yeah. multiverse. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, which they're coming out with the second one to that, right? It's across the Spider Verse, I think it's right. called. Yeah, with twenty ninety nine. Yes, I love that, and who? I like him because he's a Spider Man who kills. <laughs> yeah, so he's like the villain, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep, there we go. That, that yeah, that looks awesome. I love that first one. Um, it, but that's a perfect example, like where they changed the character. Like we got Miles Morales, who I love, right? And it was just like a slightly different. I mean, sure. it, a lot of the the same, I guess, themes and 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 mm -hmm. principles or, or whatnot. But um, completely different character. I was thinking, dude, they didn't just like shoehorn him into like the movies. Just like here's yeah. this throwaway character. They made his own thing. Right. They cut out this new animation style that no one has ever done before, and they made like an art piece, which is really right. unique. Right. That, like this character is at the centerpiece of. Yeah. That's awesome. Like that. Yeah. I I think it's probably, and I don't know if I give Marvel all the credit for it, but that that is one of the best movies in that whole absolutely whole series. Yep. Yep. And I mean, just to look, it's so different. Which I even I don't know if you've yeah. seen the trailer to the new um, 
Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. No, Seth no, Rogen no. is directing, but the style looks a lot like that. Um, Into the Spider Verse. Yeah, they're didn't trying. Even stuff. Know there was a yeah, new dude. It looks pretty cool. Really? I love I love Ninja Turtles. Really. That was when, honestly, I didn't even know it was a comic book when I was a kid uh -huh. because the movies came out. Remember the, the original movies? I, I do remember the original movies. They were dark. I, I saw, like, a lot of them. So, yeah. I, but I never knew it was a comic either. Yeah, it, it originated as a comic book. But, again, you know, you follow certain things right. and you disregard the rest of it. Yeah, you know? but I was a kid. I mean, that was, you know, early 90s. And I remember that, especially the first one. Mm -hmm. It was a dark movie for yes. a kid's movie, you yeah. know. But I loved it. Yeah. But yeah, that new one looks a lot like that Spider Verse. Huh. Um, so I mean, yeah. You know, after watching the trailer and just seeing, I, I feel like they're banking on like Michael Keaton saving the DCU. Like, uh, they, I w th there's so many people they can cast as these characters. Why do you, why do you, you know pop in the 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 lids off of coffins and bringing back <laughs> these old right. old characters, you know, yep. to play you know movies and stuff. You know, Michael Keaton. Um, uh, Black Adam. What was the guy um, that played Bond? Pierce. Oh yeah, Pierce Bronson. Yep. Pierce Bronson. Um, they're they're gonna bring back um, what's his name? Indiana Jones for oh, the, yeah. the Red Harrison Hulk. Ford, yeah. Harrison, Harrison Ford. Ford. You know, oh. for the Red Hulk. I mean, come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's many people. Might as well bring people. Jack Nicholson back as Joker exactly. while we're at it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he came out of his house the other day for the Lakers game at, at 83 years old or whatever. You know, let's cast him now too. Screw exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. It's funny because like, you know, I get it. They're actors. I understand they're not real. But mm -hmm. in in I seen a, a picture the other day of um, Michael Keaton on a movie set. Like it was either with a walker or like a cane or something. Right. And then a few hours later, I see the new trailer with him as Batman. You know, jumping out of it like I don't even know parachute. Like, yeah. exactly. why does their CGI look so bad? I, it looks the DC little, CGI looks bad. Yeah. Like I don't yeah. know what it is, but it it always looks like so clayey. Yeah. It looks yeah. like current Marvel because like Marvel, you could tell like they're. Uh, effects artists are tired well you heard on on the latest movie um they took most of their resources and piled it into um wakanda forever and then yeah. movies like yeah. um what's it called ant-man suffered and it did the seat it was just oh, like wow. really? bland color everything looked the same like wow. you would think you know the quantum verse because of how like unique it is it would look amazing right and it's like once they got down there, it just I mean, there were some some cool scenes, but overall it just was like all the same color palette, just kind of blended in together. You know? But yeah, I agree. Some of these, um some of these DC movies. What I do like though is like like their slow motion. They do a lot of yeah. like I like how they have a different look to some. Like Black Adam. Yeah. Like you're talking about Superman, don't kill. It's like Black Adam is the one who same type of power set, right. but he don't give a shit, man. Black Adam don't save. No. <laughs> now do you think so I, I read this um recently. Dwayne Johnson, who I'm a big fan of in general, he um the 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 feeling that a lot of these critics have is that he kind of sabotaged Black Adam because in the comics, Black Adam is not really a hero, right? Right. He's more of a villain, mm -hmm. or pretty much is a villain. Right. And The Rock didn't want to be a villain, so and this is all rumors, but and that's why his take on it is more of a anti-hero and then turns into a hero, mm -hmm. and he turned down playing um having a cameo in the shazam movies which i've never seen but i mean in the comics black adam and shazam are the right. rivals right so the, the the point that this guy was making this article was like when arnold schwarzenegger was willing to do what terminator the rock wasn't willing to do because he had that same feeling mm -hmm. arnold schwarzenegger big guy bodybuilder they cast him for the look mm -hmm. and he was always like very popular right? right and he's like i'm gonna do my first really major major movie and i'm gonna play a villain but he was willing to do it, and then in the second one, he became the hero. And and right. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger's amazing action career. Right. And they're saying like The Rock may have sabotaged the whole Black Adam thing with his desire to not be a villain. Well, the way Superman came in at the end of Black Adam. So I I saw the Rock character, um, the Black Adam character played by The Rock as kind of on the fence. Yeah. You know, so he can go either way. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that Superman came in at the end. Uh, there could be some challenge there, right? But I wouldn't play Black Adam as a cameo in Shazam only because the, Shaz uh, the Shazam movies are so bad. Yeah, you know. Um, but they are definitely rivals, right? So just like you know, they had like a Superman, even though they didn't show a face cameo at the end of the first Shazam. Yeah, I remember hearing about that. Uh, Black Adam should have showed up somewhere in yeah. the Shazam movie because it 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 should eventually happen, right? You yeah. know, whether it's The Rock or not. Yeah. 
But and it sucks. I mean, if that's the case, it sucks because I think he was great as Black Adam. Oh, absolutely. I love the movie. That's that 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 was a that was a good movie. Yeah. Yep. And it just it didn't do great at the box office. I, I also think it was released way um it was way too close to Black Panther. Mm -hmm. It's like we have yeah. two comic book movies. The the first word of both of them is black, and right. we're gonna release them within weeks of each other, and it's DC versus Marvel. Well, who the hell do you think everyone's gonna go see? Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. I mean, they're established one. Like little kids who don't know, they're like Black Adam or Black Panther. Like, oh, I know Black Panther. I don't know who this Adam dude is, right. but yeah. Right. And and it suffered. Like, right. it, and it's sad because I I do I think it was it was, it was a really good movie. Yeah. No. And I I love it. I feel like it used a lot of that Zack Snyder type of action in it. Yep. I, I like the the um, I like the 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 video filter that they used on it. Yeah, um, that that made it look amazing, especially you know the slow motion scenes in yep. the very beginning. I, amazing stuff. Yeah, you really got the sense of how powerful this guy's supposed to be, which they don't do in the other with the other characters, even no. Superman. Right. I mean, this dude can like bench press quintillion tons right. of stuff. Yeah. But, you know, he, they show him, like, popping around on basic crap. Yep. He can't fight, you know. Wonder Woman can beat his ass because she, again, another character that has his strength level. Yeah. But she's been trained by warriors from the very beginning. Right. You know. Her, um, you know, her, her, her father is supposed to be, you know, um, what is it, the, the god of war himself. Yeah, yeah. From, from uh, Greek mythology. Yeah. So, but they never show, like, the true power of these characters. No. So. Yeah, and it's, I, it's disappointing, but they did a very good job with uh, Black Adam, I thought. Yeah, and I think that was the one, not one, but I mean, like I said, I, I, I enjoyed the Snyder Cut. I just didn't really know why we needed it. But I think the, one of the highlights of it was how power, how he was able to kind of show what you're talking about, the power. Like, we didn't right. see that in the previous version right. of Superman. Right. But we've seen a lot of that. And even Wonder Woman, how the, I think the beginning of the movie was a lot based off of her. Mm -hmm. The whole battle, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and you're right, they showed her strength. You got right. to see it in there. Right. Which you didn't see in a lot of these other versions. Well, they say that, you know, some of... So when Superman died and he was resurrected, he was resurrected and more of his power came out. This I They, they kind of, I don't know if they... Mentioned that in the, the the Snyder version. I don't think they mentioned it. No, but, but you was, get that feel. Yeah, yeah, yes. He came back more powerful. Yeah, you know, after his death. So, yeah. and it was kind of evident when they, you know, when he was fighting the Flash and and um, Cyborg and Wonder Woman and all that kind of stuff in the city scene. So yeah. that was kind of evident even then. So yeah, oh yeah, when he first came back. Yeah, yeah, that that part was cool. Um, the whole black um sp uh, Superman suit, like right. I. But even that, I feel like, you know, they rushed that. I mean, the second movie that we see this version of Superman and he dies. Right. Like, we're at death of Superman in the second movie. Right. And yeah. there's so <laughs> like, much more content. Yeah. They, they didn't give this guy enough time to mature. Uh, this version of Superman, time to mature. Right. He spent too much time on his origin again. Yep. You know, not enough in between. Then, oh, you, you're done. Yeah. Yeah, I would have loved to have seen, like, one or two Ben Affleck Batman movies. Before you get to that, that's yeah. what it, like, you know, I feel like a lot of these characters should be a slow burn. Like right. Iron Man was a slow burn. Yep. You had two Iron Man movies, and then he starts doing yeah. things with the team and, and all that right. thing. And then he still came out with a, you know with his third one. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I think Captain they wasted America. Ben Affleck. Uh, I don't know why they're like reaching into their bag and pulling out like obscure characters when they have Green <laughs> right. Lantern, they have right. Superman, they have one. They have these characters that like are. I think have more of a draw to them, but they're tr they were. I don't know what they're doing now, but they were trying to build their that version of the universe on like these these obscure characters yeah. or whatever. And now they're like repositioning with Michael Keaton being right, Batman, right. and then and he's, he's gonna save and it. He's gonna save the whole thing. <laughs> he's got a lot on his shoulders. And and don't get me, it's it's the same thing with the banters in the Spider Man movie. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. It's just it's gonna be like, oh wow, that's cool. Right. But that's gonna be it. Right. You know, like you can't just build your whole, you know, foundation for your your universe on like, oh wow, that's cool. Like yeah, you got like, you got to like sell me on it. Find out how old Michael Keaton is. Like how many? Yeah. It, let's say this thing does pop up. How many years do we actually have left where he can get in the suit? <laughs> like I'm not I'm not trying to be, but seriously. <laughs> oh, Michael Keaton and Joe Biden. Right? I mean, yeah. I mean, Jerry Springer just died, dude. You know, right. rest in peace, Jerry Springer. Seventy one. He's seventy. Okay, so. Wow. I mean, mm. still, that's 
It's old, man, to be putting on the uh, suit. It's it, a lot of work. It is. It is. I mean, I've never put on. I mean, I've, I've dressed up for some cosplay stuff. I've never put on one of these movies, but it's a lot of work. And I, I, I've heard these uh, costumes are 30, 40, 60 pounds. Yeah. They, they can be. You yeah. Know? That's all. That's a lot of weight yeah. put on a, on a 70 something year old frame. Right. Know? And the other thing is, like, who everyone, I hear you on the, on the fan service because I, I love Michael Keaton as Batman. I do. Yeah. But I don't need. Need Batman is fantastic. Yeah. It's a great movie. But, like, I don't, you know, that movie exists for me in that memory. I don't want to, like, tarnish that right. by having this character removed from that movie and mm-hmm. placed into, like, a modern setting. Do you think they're going to do that? Tarnish it for you? I, I worry about that. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't want them to, like, take this character that I've loved who exist in that universe yeah. and then place them into what I think is kind of a failing universe right. that you have. Well, we don't even know what universe this is. It just showed up. <laughs> it, it's it's weird that they want – What is the, the point of the movie is Flashpoint. It's weird that they want to sell that to, like, a casual audience. Yeah. Like, we, we didn't make a mistake. This is Flashpoint. It's all been leading up to this. It's like – that's mm-hmm. hard for, like, a casual audience. Imagine, like, your dad coming with you to the movie right. and, like, he sees – his Batman, and then hey, uh, Ben Affleck, and then Flash, and then all these, all these right. things. Yeah, yeah. And try to explain like, that to you, Dad. It's it's <laughs> it's hard. And then they want to do so. They want to have this Batman, and they want to have a second iteration of Batman yeah. going on in the same. That's right. Series. They're doing. They I guess they're calling it the Brave and the Bold. Yeah. And it's going. They're going to introduce like the Bat Family for the for which I think would be cool. Yeah. But I'm also like I don't know that we need that the first movie. No. No. It's 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 too much, and they want that to. They want those to release alongside um, what Robert Patterson is already doing, right. which I think is a gr- it's the same reason that uh, Christopher Nolan's Batman movies were so good. They were self-contained. Right. It was right. this one character's story, the hero's journey that you could follow and you could like assimilate with, but you have it running alongside this other thing, and yeah, that's right. kind of weird to like ask. St- like uh, casual audiences to to follow along with, which right? Is odd, right? Because when I, I forget what year they're planning on that Brave and the Bowl, but it's it's in maybe the next five six years or something. So yeah. there's going to be a point in time, and and Pattinson's Batman got the the they greenlit the trilogy, so we're gonna have like it looks like three, maybe three or two or three Batman in the Flash movie. Yep. Right. You get the Ben Affleck, you got Michael Keaton, and I feel like there. I'm sure there's another surprise somewhere. We'll have like Val Kilmer show up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, don't, I think he's. I mean, I don't know. He had gone through that cancer or, or the throat issue or whatever. I, I want them to bring back George Clooney. That'd be funny. If you're gonna do it, do it. If you're yeah, gonna yeah, do yeah, it, do right, it. Just bring yep. them all. Take but, out all the stops. But let's say, let's say we have with, two with, here. With the ass and a nipple shot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. We leave the nipples off the suit this time. <laughs> then you got Robert Pattinson, and then we're gonna have a new Batman. So there's gonna be yeah. at least four different actors playing Batman within, like, five years in the D.C. And that's weird. Like, imagine going to see a movie with, like, your, your kids and having to explain to them half the time, like, no, that's not the same Batman. Exactly. It's a different it's Batman. Yep. It's confusing for a casual audience. You're oh, yeah. Try, you're trying to, they're trying to sell it to, like, only comic book fans at that point, and it's it's weird. That's not, like, a good foundation to build your, your thing on. Right. You know, it feels like a Band-Aid. Yeah. Like, like with the announcement with James Gunn and then, like, all right, here's this movie. It feels like we made a mistake. Right. Have this instead. And it's like, it's a it's big weird. mistake. That's like, we're getting divorced, but guess what? You have two Christmases. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. You should be happy. You're like, right. wait a minute. What the hell? It's almost like they feel that too much is the best route yeah. at this point. And, yep. and, and it's too much. It it's is. Too much to consume. And I, I like I've I've not I don't think I've read Flashpoint. I watched the animated movie Flashpoint. Yes, I've seen you know? the animated. And I feel like that's a, a a story that you build to like you did Endgame. Yeah, you yeah you would have to. You, you know, that's that why I would say it's, it's weird that they want to launch everything based on mm-hmm. this because they want to launch multiple things based on this. Yeah, they're they're which you can ask people in a comic book to do because they're kind of familiar with that sort of right, thing. Right, the concept. Right. Yeah, that sort of narrative in a comic book. But figuring a movie, that's that's a big thing to ask yeah. people. Like, it's All a right, different audience. It's a different audience. All right, there's multiple universes now. Yeah. Like, again, Marvel built up to that with Doctor Strange. It was an awful movie. But, right. But they built up to that so you could sell it to the audience. You can't start there. No. It's weird. And also comics um, – Typically, I mean, I don't even know what they come out with, but when I was following comics, it was a new comic once a month. Yeah. yeah. So you you had, you know, a t- uh, stories every month that led up to something. With, uh, with the movies, I mean, you got, what, three or four movies over 10 years? Mm-hmm. You know, so there's a lot happening in these two hours, and then you got to wait three or four years for the next right. thing to come up. Yeah. So, but, you know, you don't, you don't have... 
you have time to consume in the comics what you don't in the movies, but they trying to put too much in the movies. So yeah, absolutely, and, and it, it it is a different audience. Like try to explain the timeline of a comic book to somebody. You know, like all the stories yeah, are going. They're they're yeah. all over the place. And yeah, you just right. kind of accept it, right? Yeah. Like, right. Like Batman's been, you know, about in his 30s and 40s for like 100 years. We just right, it's, it's like yeah. the Simpsons. Right. Like we just right. know, like right. Bart's always whatever, 12 years old. It's just yep. it's what's going to happen. Yep. But in the movies, it's a different audience. Like the how many people I talk to that are not fans, or I shouldn't say are not fans, have never read comic books but love all the movies. Wow, yeah, a gotta, lot of people. That's got to be most most of who's watching the movies probably yeah. have never like read a comic book or whatever. And and right. I and I get it. Like it's a it's a different audience. It's different. You know, comics aren't as popular as they used to be and whatnot, but, you know, uh, a lot of people don't know the source material, but it, it, it's weird to, to like, try to explain that to, to people in a movie. Yeah. It's different in, like, a show. Right. You know, which is why I think they want to do a lot of those. You can kind of do those mm. slow burn kind yeah. of things a lot. That's what helped Marvel, too. Like, as yeah. much as, the, you know, Doctor Strange was a mess, I think it was less messy because we built to it in Loki. Right, we mm-hmm. we under like at least we understand why there's the multiverse now. We understand right. why things are all screwed up. Mm-hmm. So we they built to it. Now this is one movie. So I haven't seen it yet. Obviously, it comes out in June, but I don't think they're gonna have enough time in this one movie to build build to exactly now. Now I get the flashpoint concept, but it's just I don't even know why I should care that much about this Flash character. Yeah, I mean, I think for me because I've. I would say I've become more of a casual movie yeah. guy. Like I'm not like always looking for the latest release and everything. If it has Batman in it, I'm gonna see it. That's how that works. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't like I, I don't sit down and watch all the shows, so I typically don't have any frame of reference for that. But I feel like I shouldn't have to do homework to go see right. a movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I feel like you gotta if you're gonna do the shows and all that stuff, you gotta keep that as separate because I am at this point, I think the casual audience is just that I understand like the multiverse thing and what yeah. you're trying to do. So then I have to explain it to like my dad when we go see it in the weird, <laughs> you know. Well, you're gonna have a lot of explaining to do yeah. in June because yeah. yeah. this one's gonna be interesting. So on that, let's. Do you think Chris Michael Keaton's gonna save the DCU? No, no, no. I think it'll be cool to see him on screen. I just, you know, I, I hope, I hope they don't like kill him off. Yeah. Like try to do. I could see them doing something like that, like some emotional, oh, like yeah. hero sacrifice sort of thing, and it's just. I don't I don't need that. I yeah. like him existing in in that memory in my Me head too. of of that movie. It doesn't need it. I do I think he's going to say DCU no. I don't think <laughs> no. the movie is necessary. I think you should have just re, I don't know. Restarted it. I feel like they're afraid to do like these um origin stories. You know, Batman doesn't need an origin. So no. you can just kind of jump into that character. People kind of get it already. Right. But if you did like Green Lantern again or something like that, you got to you got to give an origin story, you, yeah. gotta, you know. Sure. You can't just start pulling these people out already established right. and trying to make up for lost time. And it's weird because, I mean, Marvel's been doing their thing for almost two decades now. And it, it's weird that, you know, they're trying to play catch up like that. Right. You know, because, audi- like like you said, Adrian, the, the audience has aged out a lot. And now it's a different audience. Like, mm-hmm. your kids are seeing the movies now yeah. with you. Uh, you know, it, it's just different. Yeah, like my kids have—they ne- don't know much about Flash or these characters, so they're going to go into this and they've never read Flashpoint. They've not yeah. watched it, and I'm going to have to explain all kinds of shit to them. Yeah, yeah. They're going to wonder why there's two different Batmans. Like it's, but yeah, there's been no explanation. But I'm, I'm with yeah. you. I, I don't think Michael Keaton's going to save the DCU. Um, I think I will enjoy the movie. I'm kind of like you with the Batman. Like if there's Batman there, I'm, yep. I'm here for it. Yep. But I, I think I'll enjoy it. But I'm. I don't feel like Michael Keaton's version of Batman fits in any universe but that Tim Burton yeah, universe. Yeah. Like it's it was so I mean it was gothic, it was so it was so Tim Burton. It was theatrical, it was over it the was, top, yeah. it was goofy right. and I it mean fits Penguin so had well. freaking fins. Like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Right. When yeah. he, he bit, you know, when I was a kid, dude, that was traumatic. When he bit the guy's nose, yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. <laughs> like I, lo- I watched it now, I love. It. He's like, imagine bleeding right on TV, huh? And he just, <laughs> like, what? <laughs> but yeah, that was what we had. That he's just gonna fit into this other universe with Flash trying to save his mom. Yeah, like, it's you know. Yeah, so I, I'm, I agree. I'm going. No, he ain't gonna save it. What about you, Adrian? No, he's not gonna save it. Um, you know, hopefully they'll ride him off into the sunset. Yeah. Um, kind of preserve his character yeah i hope they don't um, kill him but yeah i no he's i i, I don't think that the trajectory that dc is going on right now 
is kind of salvageable yeah. with the things that they supposed to be there, you know, proposing for the next 10 years. They're going to bring out all these obscure, even more obscure people. Right. Yeah. Um, they're going to create teams. I mean, it's just weird. Um, I like the idea that they're going to try to hit all the platforms simultaneously. Uh, yeah, I do like but, that. Yeah. But that's going to be a lot. And the fact that they can't even pull off one decent movie, you know, they can only pull off, pull off a couple of decent movies and, you know, 10 or 20 years, yeah. um, which means to me, that means that they're going to fail on this multi-platform you know, initiative. So. Yeah, I think so too. I, I also I, think that like, uh, like you said, like this, they're announcing like their 10 year plan. Like I'm a different person now than I was when Marvel started doing their movies right. or whatnot. You're asking me to stay invested right. for the next 10 years with background characters. Right. I can't do that. No, like right. it's, it's, you know, you know it, that's a huge investment for just a couple background characters. And it's weird to like, give me these things in advance or whatever. Yeah. Don't tell me, right. Right. just tell me like, you know, I'm making a Batman movie. It'll yeah. come out in this year. You right. know, don't tell me the whole plan because I've already decided whether or not I want to go see right. it. You know what I mean? That's a great point. Mar Marvel didn't start doing that until no. I think they were like halfway through this, like the first few phases. It and wasn't... they would give you a plan for like three years. Yeah. It would be, give you a plan right. for three years. You could plan for that. You'd be like, oh, wow, I'm really hyped for this. Not mm -hmm. the next 10 years. Because it always changes. I could be dead right. by then. Right. Right? <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me the next Batman movie that's going to save everything is going to be in seven years. I could be dead. Yeah. Like, give me something good now. Right. Don't give me background <laughs> right. characters, you know? Yep. Decide yeah. who your flagships are. Yeah. And, and then and then the characters like Waller. I mean, you might as well have a J. Jameson, yeah. you know, yeah. movie. You know, uh, Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing it was actually the first comic um, that I remember that they actually made into a movie. Yeah. With uh, the show, uh, huh? Remember it was the a show. Yeah. 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 No. I'm, well, yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't remember a show, but there was yeah. a movie with uh, Adrian Barbo. Okay. Um, I believe Swamp Thing back in the day. It was actually a decent movie. Yeah. Um, but I didn't even know that was a, a comic. At the I time. didn't either. So, I didn't know but, it was DC. <laughs> but but they were they they're gonna come out with Swamp Thing and there's some league. Yeah. They're gonna split off and do um, the Green Lantern with Hal Jordan um, and the other guy. I forget his name. Yeah. Um, as, as like detectives on Earth, and you know they're like galactic detectives, which they are anyway. Yeah. But they're gonna spin it as a detective kind of storyline. So it, it's just a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And and I'm all for bringing out, you know. Um, characters but they but the movies when they do bring them out they got to have substance you know they got to have a reason to bring them out right. not just pop them out and for whatever reason so yeah ah. it's also weird to like tell us like when he was giving like summaries as to what the movies will kind of be in like seven years like what the premise will be right. yeah you don't know if that's gonna work then no right. you don't know what else is coming ar out around you at that same year right like it, it's it's weird i like green lantern but you don't know what else is, is going to be in the theater at that point in time. Right. Don't tell me how you're going to present the movie and whatnot. You know, it, it's right. just leave some things up for the trailer. Yeah. Spoil it in the trailer, I guess. Like, yeah, yeah. If you have to. <laughs> I don't know. It's, especially I think that there's so many other non-comic book superhero kind of movies that are coming out. Yeah. You know, every other movie has some kind of, you know, um, character with a superpower. Right. You know, like uh, saving Dion, and you know, I mean, all these weird things that that's going on. So they also have to kind of pull people's attention away from those things, yeah, and then isolate their characters as okay, they are a superhero in the comic book world, as opposed to somebody with some mediocre power that grew up in a cornfield in Iowa, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. So, so they, they they're fighting a lot of things, I think. Yeah. Uh, which is justifiable, but they're just doing a bad job. At yeah, it. I think they just want to get, they want the shortcut. And it's right. like, I think the fan base would be here for a, a slow burn. Like, yeah. I mean, with yes. the Batman, it came out, what, 2020. And I don't think we're not going to see a sequel for like two, three more years. Uh, well, Batman came out in 2022. 2022. Okay. 2022. Yeah, Got we it. won't see a sequel. For, for a few years. But it was good enough where you're going to build the hype for it. And yeah. you didn't say what the movie's going to be about. Nope. And I don't want to know. But that's how movies used to be released. You yeah. used to, you know, you had a movie and you're like, all right, we greenlit the sequel. Oh, mm -hmm. we could build hype around the sequel. Yeah. You don't give me a 10-year plan with the studio. Right. Plans right. I don't, do. I don't, I'm not, I'm less interested in the DCU because you're going to throw yes. Waller in it. Yeah. You know, and or, everything, yeah. And everything else. <laughs> yep. So I'm just, that dampens my interest in what you're trying to create. Right. It's like they're answering questions we're not asking. Yeah. And the shit that everybody wants to know, like, how about the Suicide Squad? Which, first of all, are either one of them going to be a part of this, right? <laughs> right. 
Because it's like I the first movie I thought the trailer was great, mm-hmm. and then the movie started started off all right, so and then I was like, so once bad. we got like the Enchantress, I did not like it all. No. It was a horrible villain. It was really bad. And then it just became like they made it seem like it was going to be a Deadpool level of of movie, you know, as far as just the hype and and, and the light, like just all the con, and it wasn't. Mm-hmm. And then they rebooted it with the second one, which I I I didn't like that one either, to be honest. Yeah. Did you did you like the newer? Did you see that one? I did not like the the second Suicide Squad with the damn um, shark and right. And like the, the first one weasel. was digestible. Yeah. Um, right. but the second one, I yeah, that was, I kind of vomited in my mouth yeah. a little bit. Yeah. I think I enjoyed Birds of Prey better than both of those two movies. Yes. It just came out during COVID and like yes. nobody saw it. Right. That that sucked because I thought that was a great movie. I never saw that, and I never saw the second Suicide Squad. Dude, it's awesome. The first yeah. one, uh, I hated. It yeah. was it was really bad. And I remember the only thing I remember about the movie was the guy who could climb anything. That yeah. was his superpower. <laughs> they were like, "Here's this guy. He can, <laughs> he can climb anything." And then he started to climb something, and he immediately died. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "All right, well, I've already." How about the polka, out dot, the polka dot dude in the uh, second one? <laughs> his power is he has polka dots, and they like fall off him. <laughs> but but that's that's kind of like that team that they're trying to build in the DCU. Yeah, uh, that's one of his the the ten things that you know they they're gonna promote. Yep. Yeah, some Suicide Squad type of team. Yeah. Which is sad. Which it is, is sad. Yeah. It is. But yeah, so we're going. I don't think nope, Mike Mike Keaton's not saving it. Nope. And I don't even know if James Gunn is gonna save it. Like nope. I I, I think yeah. they're on the wrong path. And they're trying to rush the multiverse and I don't think it's gonna work. I agree. I think they'll be re- resetting this again in like three or four years. Yes. You know. It's weird to see like studios like w- when you can watch a movie and understand uh the conversation that happened in the boardroom yeah. to make the movie. Like when certain moves <laughs> get placed and right. like certain things are changed and like this plot point and like it's it's weird to like see that. Yeah. Like having to make an announcement, like apologizing for your previous movies and like here, I'm the guy now. Right. Yeah. Like it's weird because you can like tell the board meeting that happened prior to that video. Right. That's strange. Like it, it's just, so I don't think they can save it because of the stuff happening outside of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's too much. And it's almost too transparent. We don't need to know all that. Do no. We? Like, let's just we're just here for the movies. Don't well, tell me if there's a problem. Right. Well, well, I think a lot of it may also be that it's kind of like the CEOs and, you know, in corporations. They're they are so much more than CEOs, you know, today. They're also, you know, political um people. Yeah. You know, so you know, the James Guns and all these directors and stuff their job is more than just being a creative director now. Mm. You know, they have to focus on, you know, public opinion. Right. They have to bring money in, so they're responsible to the shareholders. So there's all these different facets of them. Yeah, there's a lot. I, I, I think that they're just being splintered. They're actually being taken away from their job. Right. Because they have to wear so many other hats. And and it's 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 sad. Yeah. That's actually. a great point. A lot of it I think these guys get a lot of unwarranted hate and, and critique. Right. Like I don't if, if this fails, I don't think it's James Gunn's fault. I don't think it's Michael no. Keaton's fault. I think no. a lot of this I agree. It comes from the studio. Right. And they screw everything up. Yeah. I mean that was the issue even now there I seen some comments recently from um um, the actress, I forget her name, who plays America Chavez in um, Doctor Strange, defending mm-hmm. the writer because she was like, you don't understand the studio. Because I guess recently there's been a bunch of people online who are critiquing the, the writer of Doctor Strange for it being messy or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And she said, but he's had to go through 33 rewrites because of the studio. Wow. So it's like, may, I'm sure one of those other 32 versions of that movie was probably better. But right. but you're right. There's a lot of other shit they're dealing yep. with. So Definitely. Um, we're gonna we're gonna wrap with I guess why comics is what we'll call it because um you know why 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 are we, now we were talking about why we're doing this mm-hmm. but also what I wanted to share first episode um is why did we fall in love in comics and when did that happen so um I'll I'll start and then, and then we'll bounce off you two we'll wrap this thing up so me you know I, I didn't now I didn't know Ninja Turtles was a comic so I'm not gonna use that it was probably my first venture into it but um. I I grew up in the in the nineties, so I the we had the X Men animated series and the Batman animated series were huge. But when I started reading comic books, so I used to go, my mom used to go grocery shopping at Stop and Shop, and I remember during the summers I'd have to go with her, mm-hmm. and I would when I got old enough, Chris, like I I was probably I don't know eight nine years old where I could like go to a part in the store by myself and yeah. be trusted, right? Yeah. Like I thought it was awesome, you know. I was like, you know, could I go? where the magazines are. So I used to go to the magazine aisle and I would read like sports magazines, WWF at the time magazine, stuff mm-hmm. like that. And then I found a comic rack 
Mm -hmm. And I just, every week throughout the summer, I would go with her and I would just read whatever was on that rack. So it was a lot of early X-Men stuff, Batman stuff. Now I knew the Batman movie, but I was young when that came out, 89, I was like four years old. Um, So I started just reading comic books at the grocery store Mm -hmm. while my mom was shopping. Mm -hmm. And that's where I read a lot of these early um, Spider-Man ones. Like I couldn't tell you the issues, but I remember reading a lot of like early 90s Spider-Man stuff. And I just, I, I loved it. It was just like an escape, right? Like it all exactly. shit going on, you know, my childhood, whatever. And, and I mean, the last thing you want to do is like an eight year old kid is go grocery shopping. So it's like, I was able at that point, I learned that I could use this miss medium to escape whatever's going on. So that was my escape. And then I just, I mean, I, I got, I obsessed with it. Like I, I got into the Batman animated series and X-Men animated series were really my first major venture. Um, mm-hmm. And it was a local comic book store, we, you know, right? We have in New London. I'd go down there, and, and actually, it was back in Groton when when, when I was a kid. Mm. But I would go there and just read stuff, you know, just grab right. stuff. And I was I was fascinated with all of it, and I loved um, the Batman movies as a kid. So that's probably why, I like, Batman is my favorite character, mm-hmm. probably because of that. Batman '89, Batman Returns is like one of my all time favorite movies. But mm. um, it was then, and then. You know, I kind of paused on it for a while, and you know, just through work and stuff like that. But then I got into graphic novels. Probably, I don't know, five, six years ago. And that's when I went down. Like, most of my graphic novels that I own, 90% of them are Batman. Yeah, yep. And I just, I got, I mean, all the classics. Year One, Long Halloween, Dark Victory, mm-hmm. um, Killing Joke. And I just I just kept going. What I was trying to do was, like, because the Batman timeline is just like every other comic timeline, all over the place. Right. And I, I was trying to go from Year One and, like, essential stories that would kind of tie into each other. So I, I collected that way. So I have like from year one to like, you know, Dark Knight Returns and things that I feel go together. But that's that's how I started, you know, and mm-hmm. I, and, and to this day, I mean, I, I read read comics on the apps now, like DC's mm-hmm. app and the Marvel app. But I'm, I've, I watch all the shows, all the movies like I'm here for it. I'm, I'm a right. fanatic. I I love it and hate it. You know, it's like right. anything right. like I, some stuff. It's but it's still that escape for me, mm-hmm. you know, and I think I will as long as I'm able to see and hear I'll, I'll be here for the movies but um but yeah it started there grocery store little turnstile and now here we are today mm. so um what about you well for me um i was i've been drawing like all it's as far back as i can remember four or five years old so but i didn't get into comics until maybe seventh grade you know okay. because my friends were into comics i didn't really know what it was yeah because i was kind of isolated you know, you couldn't really go anywhere um, and do anything. So my art was my escape at the time. Okay. So when I got into comics, um, I was attracted to the art. Um, one of my favorite artists was John Byrne, you know, who turned out to be somebody completely different. But um, I, I loved his art. And that's, I would mo- try to model my artwork after him. Yeah. So and then, you know, you you once you get into comics, you meet other people with different types of um, comics, you know, you get into the, you know, the graphic novels and stuff, the Conans and all this other kind of stuff. So you go from these, you know, little, you know, seven and a half by five books or whatever to these giant graphic, you know, 12 by 13 yeah. uh, pages, black and white, a lot of it. And, um, you know, you, you'd have these people that would, you know, bring their comic books to, to school to swap in plastic bags, you know. Yeah. Oh, I, I'll only give you one. You give me one, I give you one. So, you know, even back then it was that that sense of uh, it was it was a precious thing but yeah. definitely an escape yeah definitely escape because you know when i got into comics early 80s there was really not that much to do i mean we we talk about being distracted today from all the stuff that you have to do back then it really wasn't that much to do right um so that's how i got into it yeah. but then when i joined the, got into the navy then i was introduced to anime okay and so there was a whole different spin but again attracted to the art yeah. even to this day i won't watch certain anime because of the how it's drawn okay or how it's rendered you know things like that so that that did it for me but um you kind of gravitate towards certain characters you talk about batman being your favorite yeah my favorite is probably um iron man uh tony stark character yeah and mr fantastic Okay. Um, these guys actually kind of beca- because I didn't really have a father figure. These guys, in a way, became my father figures. Yeah, you know, um, f- good or bad, you know, you wanted to be because they were brainiacs. Mm-hmm. You know, to me, yeah, um, very smart. 
successful, you know, you know, going around doing galactic things. So not only was it an escape, but you kind of gravitated toward a particular character or characters, and you kind of try to model to some degree your life, you know, mm. around that. Um, so that's how I got into it. Um, today, these guys, but also these guys, they just also happen to be the characters that the movies and you know society yeah, kind of promote Iron the Man. worst. Yeah, yeah, they 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 promote them the most, which which I right. think also plays into why they're our favorite characters too. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. And was fu- it's funny that you picked Iron Man because he was like an obscure character. He was not a, a fan favorite back in the day. I, I I never knew that because he was always my yeah. you know favorite. And I would, you know, read all of his comic books, you know, everything. So because yep. when I was on that turnstile, dude, the one I skipped every week was <laughs> Iron Man. I skipped Iron Man. I skipped Captain America. Yeah. I was like Spider Man, yeah. Batman, Wolverine, X Men. I'm here for all that. The rest right. of them, no, that shit can stay there and collect dust. Oh wow! But wow. It, you know I, what? What you said about connecting with the character, I think part of the reason why I, I love Batman so much is, you know, I, I was adopted. My I was adopted by my stepdad at the time raised by my biological mom my stepdad and and he adopted me took his last name and then um fast forward to you know i me and my wife adopted our nephews you know a mm-hmm. few years ago and batman is big on like that family that right. he's kind of brought in mm-hmm. so i mean he was raised by alfred who is pretty much that father figure so right. i think a lot of those parallels like i connected with as a character and i mean how, how can you not love batman he's just a regular right. dude that competes with people that, you know, super strength, all this stuff. And he right. figures it and he's to Tony Stark's point, he's, he's smart. He's genius. Right. Which I think we don't see that enough sometimes. Right. But in the comics, it's there. He's a detective. He's one of the smartest people in the world. He's, yeah. And I just loved how he, he, he created himself. Like he, he optimized his human body. He got to this right. point where he learned all these martial arts tactics. He's, mm-hmm. you know, everything that you could possibly do to become this, you know, superhero, he did. Right. You know, so I, I've always, I connected there. But right. he, be, he, he became the epitome of whatever he could be mentally, physically. Yeah. Um, despite the fact that he was going up against or riding alongside people that could dwarf him in, in any other kind right. of super measure. Yeah. But you can never count him out. He's always, he'll yep. figure out a way. Yep. They always say, right, with enough time, Batman will beat anyone. But yep. <laughs> right. What about you, Chris? Uh, my first comic was. Uh, I had to have been in first grade. First grade, and yep. uh, we they used to have these bookstores at the at the school. Oh yeah, the book fair. They would they would partner with the school. It was like a fundraising thing. Okay. Because uh, they they during school they'd set the kids loose in the library. You'd look at the books, and then you yep. go home and beg your parents for money for the books. And the school got a little bit of that. So we would go into the the library and look at these books, and uh, there was there was only one comic book. It was uh, Spider Girl. Yeah, just come up with like a graphic novel or something like that. So it was a thing, and I I just saw Spider Man. You know, I just saw I saw the movie and I yeah. recognized Spider Man. So I you already seen the movie? Yeah, yeah, okay. probably at that time. So I remember asking a teacher to help me write it down because I couldn't spell because I was young, <laughs> and she said, "No, no, no, you don't want that. That says Spider Girl. You can't have that." And I was so upset that I went home and I like begged my mom for it. Yeah, and, was, and then she, it was it was you know. She just got me the book, the book, and I couldn't fucking read it. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I remember for years I would just look at the pictures of uh, of, of uh, the comic. I would just flip yep. through it, look at all the pictures. Um, that was the very first one. Uh, I got into Batman in my teens. Uh, that was definitely he's definitely still my favorite character. Yeah. But I same as Adrian. I've always drawn. I've always written and drawn my own little comic strips and stuff yeah. like that. And uh, just that. Art style fascinates me. The storytelling, the the fact that you can, it's it's essentially you can make a movie as as long as you yeah. have the time and effort to to put into drawing a comic, you can make your own movie. And yeah, you have no budget. Sky's the limit. Right. That is always something that's fascinated me. Being able to like create your own world and the fact that these characters are still lasting is crazy to me too. That you can leave an impression on media. Yeah. For so long that can outlive you and and then inspire other people. If I had, if I listened to that teacher, if I had never picked up the book because it said Spider Girl, yeah, I would not be doing what I am today. I would not be drawing. I would not be doing all this. So yeah. and I, you know, so I, thank you, Miss. This you said it was your first grade teacher. Uh, it was it was like a helper teacher. Helper, yeah, of course, yeah. she wasn't the real teacher. Yeah. I will not say her name. We're not going to say her name, but <laughs> yeah. you know who you are. You almost re- <laughs> Chris wouldn't be sitting in his damn chair right now. If he listened to your dumbass, yeah, I, I <laughs> actually have, I I have that um, 
comic still. Oh, you got to bring it in next week. Yeah, I got <laughs> to show it here. I got it self. Uh, I got it published or not published. Jesus, I got um, uh, it bound. Oh, so okay. It's in like a hard leather bound yeah. case. Like it's nice. like pristine. And, All right, uh, you got to bring it in next week. Yeah, I'm gonna show it here. And that teacher, I hope you got fired. I hope you're not a teacher anymore because that's that's messed up. Like, who gives a shit? Spider-Man, Spider-Girl, spider Boy, who cares? He won the damn comic. She yeah. almost ruined she almost ruined your life. I've gone back and read it, and it's a great series. Yeah. I, I've I've read it again, and, and, and it's fantastic. See, so. if you would have, we're just going to call her Miss Jones. If you would listen to Miss Jones, Jones, you would have not been in comics. Yeah. Unbelievable. So, no, no hard feelings. God, no hard, no, there's no hard plenty of No hard feelings from Chris, hard feelings from me. I don't like that. Unbelievable. On that note, we're done. No. Um, but, hey, guys, thanks thanks for joining us week one. Sure, we're going to sure. be in doing this every single week, um, you know, dropping every Monday, and we'll, we'll stay up on everything that's going on. And, again, we're not experts. We're just comic book fans. The only thing we're going to talk about here is comics. I believe this is the only comic podcast you need. We're just regular people. Um, that's the, you know, I, I, I love this genre. And, and to be straight up, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this was I was looking for a comic book podcast. And the problem is, for me, is a lot of them are just way over my head. Like, mm. they're, they're too smart. And I'm not knocking. It's great. I think it's awesome that there's some people that can read off, every, you know, tell you every issue number and, and remember all these storylines. And, and we're not that. So if you're looking right. for that, this is not your podcast. If you're not looking for that, this is the only comic book podcast that you need. Um, but we're just, you know, ca somewhat casual fans at times. I think diehard purists. Like, I, I, I think I'm a lifer. Um, and again, we'll just be doing this every single week and, and just try to provide you guys with that kind of like how comics was an escape for us. Hopefully it's going to be an escape for some people outside of all, all the, the shit that we do day in and day out. So Adrian, Chris, thanks for, for joining us week one. Problem, we got problem. it done. We're finally here. We we'll back at you next week. Thanks for watching, downloading, and we'll be here every Monday on only comics. <laughs>